Hi class, this is Dr. Heather Austin Robillard. As we continue to learn about eating disorders in special populations, I want to begin to talk about one population that has a risk factor for uh, eating disorders. Athletics can have a lot of benefits like building self-esteem and discipline and teamwork. However, athletes are under an extreme amount of pressure to perform and have certain body ideals. When you add this to the cultural stigma of thinness, this is a risk factor for increasing eating disorder symptomology in the development of uh, athletes. While eating disorders occur in all types of sports, there are sp some sports that are at a greater risk for eating disorders. Those are referred to as lean sports. Lean sports are those who have weight class requirements in which a low body weight and a lean body is believed to be the best for competitive advantage. This includes gymnastics, diving, rowing, ballet, running, cycling, um, wrestling, and even martial arts. Eating disorders and disordered eating are the most common in sports that emphasize weight, diet, appearance, size, and weight. Eating disorder prevalence varies by sport gen and gender. Females uh, tend to be more risk factors for endurance or aesthetic sports, and males tend to have higher risk factors for eating disorders when they are in weight class sports. The National Eating Disorder Association estimates that 33% of male athletes are, um, with eating disorders are in weight class sports, whereas 62% of female athletes with eating disorders are also in weight class sports. There's another study by the, uh, that over one third of females in Division I NCAA athletes struggle with anorexia nervosa particularly. Eating disorders tend to develop more in athletes who are judged in the sports that they play or compared to those that are refereed sports. 13% of athletes in judge sports have eating disorders compared to 3% of those with refereed sports. Let's take a look at some of the risk factors that increase an athlete's chance of developing an eating disorder. There are three categorized risk factors proposed. One is the predispositions, two are the triggers, and three are the perpetuating circumstances. If we look at some of the risk factors, they're divided into biology and genetics, um, this can play predisposition in their genetics or their age or, their, or whether they have entered puberty or not. There's also categories of risk factors in their psychology if they have an increased body dissatisfaction or low self-esteem. Um, they, if they have any type of personality traits that are common among eating disorders like perfectionism. Or they have any kind of negative affects like depression or anxiety. Um, there are also gender-specific risk factors. Um, if they have a drive for masculinity or an anabolic or androgenic steroid use or even homosexuality, which we'll talk about in another lecture. Physical and or sexual abuse, socioculture categories like eating disorders in their family, uh, specific peer pressure, influence of the media, or even bullying. And then of course there's sports specific risk factors. This includes weight cycling and diet pressure, uh, personality traits, early start of sport specific training, traumatic events like certain injuries, uh, if they have coaching behaviors that are more weight related, or rules and regulations with their sports like weight uh, regulations and everything. There are also three risk factors that are thought to be to particularly contribute to, fem uh, to female athletes' vulnerability in developing an eating disorder. Those include social, in uh, social influences that emphasize thinness, performance anxiety, and negative self-appraisal of athletic achievement. A fourth factor is identity solely based on the participation in their athletics. Some of these symptoms for eating disorders among athletes can include the body. This is a decline in their energy, a reduced muscle fu function and coordination. They could suffer from injuries because of osteoporosis and bone loss, heart rate, blood pressure increased, recovery time required. 
it, they also have symptoms of the mind. They tend to have concentration, perfectionism, and mood disturbances. They will isolate. They have ritualistic eating and preoccupation with food. Again, there's some specific uh, criteria that happens in female athletes. And one that has been researched over time is called the female athlete triad. The female athlete triad includes disordered eating, amenorrhea, and osteoporosis. The lack of nutrition resulting from disordered eating can cause the loss of several or more consecutive periods. This in turn leads to calcium and bone loss, putting the athlete at a greatly increased risk for stress fractures. Each of these conditions is a medical concern. Together, they create serious health risks that may be life-threatening. While any female athlete can develop the triad, adolescent girls are the most at risk because of the active biological changes and growth spurts, peer and social pressures, and rapidly changing life circumstances that go along with teenage years. Early intervention is critical in eating disorder recovery. Let's talk about amenorrhea. Functional amenorrhea is caused by exercise and inadequate nutrition to support the level of activity. Energy deprivation from disordered eating. Primary amenorrhea is a no menstruation by the age of 16 in a girl who has reached puberty. Secondary amenorrhea is the absence of three or more consecutively missed cycles after cycles have been established. This is a reversible condition. Osteoporosis causes bones to become weak and brittle. Extreme fragility leads to even a uh, even a fall, bump, or coughing causing a fracture. Most commonly breaks are in wrists, hip, and spine. The, prim the primary cause in premenopausal pre active young women is decreased hormones as a re result of their amenorrhea, low bone mass and bone fragility, severe osteoporosis is one or more fragility fractures. Christy Henrich was one of America's most promising gymnasts of the 1980s. In June 1986, at the age of 13, she was the fifth in all around at the National Junior Championship. She finished 10th in 1988 at the Senior Nationals. But Henrik became lamented symbol of the Peter Pan principle that in order to win, gymnasts must remain tiny and never grow up. The average size of a gymnast who wants to compete at the top level has been declining over the years. In 1976, female gymnasts averaged 5'3 at 105 pounds. In 1992, the average was 4'9 at 88 pounds. The ideal is not necessarily self-induced. Most agree that Henrik's turning point came in March 1988 at a meet in the Budapest, Hungary, when a U.S. judge warned her that she was too fat and needed to lose weight in order to make the Olympic squad. Over the ensuing months, Henrik lost several pounds, bringing her weight down to 90. When she failed to make the 1988 Olympic team by 0.118, by 0.118 of a point, her eating problems escalated. She was forced to retire from sports in January 1991. She said, my life is her horrifying nightmare. It feels like there's a beast inside of me. In 1994, Henrik died of multiple organ failure after her weight plummeted to just 47 pounds. This tragedy changed our view on gymnastics broadcasting as broadcasting was focused on weight loss to improve performance. Though most research on athletes with eating disorders are female, male athletes also are at risk, especially those competing in sports that tend to place an emphasis on the athlete's diet appearance, size, and weight requirements, such as wrestling, bodybuilding, crew, and running. Little research on the male population of eating disorders among athletes is, has been done. However, there has been some that shows that low energy availability can result in low testosterone, and low testosterone leads to bone loss, osteoporosis, and a low sperm count. An area where there has been some research when it comes to male eating disorders is muscle dysmorphia. The DSM criteria clinicians use for diagnosing body dysmorphia include a preoccupation with an imagined defect in their appearance. If a slight physical anomaly is present, the person's concern is markedly excessive. 
The preoccupation causes clinically significant distress or impairment in social, occupational, or other important functioning. The, preoccupi the preoccupation is not better accounted for another mental uh, health disorder like the dissatisfaction of body and shape and size in those with anorexia nervosa. The DSM-5 has, has added muscle dysmorphia to a specification in body dysmorphic disorder. There are some protective factors to think about when it comes to athletes in order to prevent eating disorders. If they have a positive person-oriented coaching style rather than the negative per, uh, performance-oriented coaching style, if they have social influence and support from teammates with healthy attitudes towards size and shape, if they have coaches that emphasize factors that contribute to personal success such as motivation and enthusiasm, rather than weight and shape, and that coaches and parents are educated and talk about and support changing female body. In this lecture video, we learned about a special population in which eating disorders are the most common. Athletes suffer strict diet and body ideal types in order to compete. This can increase their prevalence and risk factors for developing an eating disorder. We learned about the specific symptoms that um, eating disorder athletes might suffer from, and that are specifically present in female or male athletes. Of course, there is still more to learn about those who are non-binary individuals.